all of us can slow or reverse the effects of aging. Aging is not the normal and natural consequence that we all will suffer, but rather aging is a disease that can be slowed or halted. Interventions that can help us all age more slowly and reverse the effects of aging in all tissues of the body. You're going to learn the mechanistic science behind reversing the aging process and practical tools that you can apply in your everyday life. Health Lab. This is something I hear a lot about, that fasting is good for us but rarely do I hear why it's good for us. Why is it that having elevated blood sugar, glucose, and insulin ages us more quickly? And or why is it that having periods of time each day or perhaps longer can extend our lifespan? Well, let's start with, with what I think was a big mistake, was the idea that people should never be hungry. We live in a world now where there's at least three meals a day, and then we've got companies selling bars and uh, snacks in between. So the feeling of hunger, almost, some people never experience hunger in their whole lives. It's really, really bad for them. What we actually found, uh, my colleagues and I, uh, across this field of longevity, is that when you look at animals, whether it's a dog or a mouse or a monkey, the ones that live the longest, by far, 30% longer and stay healthy, are the ones that don't eat all the time. And we showed in 2005 uh, in a science paper that if you have low levels of insulin, and another molecule called insulin-like growth factor, those low levels turn on the longevity genes. One of them that's really important is called SIRT1. And, but by having high levels of insulin all day, being fed means your longevity genes are not switched on. So you're falling apart, your epigenome, your information that keeps your cells functioning over time just degrades quicker. Your, your clock is ticking faster by always being fed, okay? Um, the other thing that I think might be happening by always having food around is that it's not allowing the cell to have periods of rest and, and reestablish the epigenome. And so it also is accelerating in that direction. What is the protocol that people can extrapolate from that? Well, I'll tell you what I do. Um, I, I skip breakfast. I have a tiny bit of yogurt or olive oil because the supplements I have need to be dissolved in it. And then I go throughout the whole day as I'm doing right now here with this uh, this glass of water here. I'm just keeping myself filled with liquids and so I don't feel hungry. Beware that the first two to three weeks when you try that, you will feel hungry. And you also have a habit of wanting to chew on something. There's a lot of physical parts to it. But try to make it through the first three weeks and do without breakfast or do without dinner. Uh, and I, you'll get through it. And I did that most for most of my life, actually. Uh, mainly because it, I didn't, I wasn't hungry in the morning. Some people are very hungry in the morning and they may want to consider skipping dinner instead. But I will go throughout the whole day. I don't get the crashes of the high glucose and the low glucose. That uh, Anyone who goes, oh man, it's three o'clock, I'm going to need a sleep. If you do what I do, you, you will not experience that anymore. Because what my body does is it's, it regulates blood sugar levels naturally. My liver is putting out glucose when it needs to and it's very steady and gives me pure focus throughout the day. And I don't have to even have to think about lunch, I'm just powering through. You reminded me of something that I meant to ask earlier, that obesity reduces NAD levels and accelerates aging. How? Uh, and so that we don't know, but I'll give you my best answer, which is that uh, obesity comes along with a lot of problems that uh, include a lot of senescent cells in fat. If you stain old fat, for senescent cells, it lights up. Mm -hmm. And when you kill off those cells, mm -hmm. at least in mice and maybe in humans, it looks like um, the fat is less toxic to the body because those senescent cells in their fat are secreting these inflammatory molecules that will accelerate aging as we now know. We talk about the sirtuins and NAD. So if we, if we just look philosophically at why this would be, the sirtuins only like to come on or get activated when the body needs is under adversity. And if, a cell is surrounded by fat or contains a lot of fat, it's gonna think times are good, doesn't need to switch on. What you wanna do is to get the cells to be perceiving adversity, okay? Because our modern life, we're sitting around, we're eating too much, uh, we're not exercising. Our cells respond, they go, hey, everything's cool, no problem. And they become relaxed and they don't turn on their defenses and we age rapidly. We can see it in the clock. People who exercise and eat less have a slower ticking clock. What I found in my research was that if we gave resveratrol, this red wine molecule that became well known in the 2000s, if we gave it to mice their whole lifespan, they were protected against a high fat diet, 
which we call the Western diet. They had lean organs. They lived slightly longer, but not a lot. And if we gave uh, them a high fat diet without resveratrol, they actually um, lived a lot shorter. So resveratrol protected them against the high fat diet. We gave it to them on a normal diet. They just ate it when they wanted and there wasn't much effect. This is what's not known, though it's in the supplemental data of the paper that nobody ever reads. The mice that were given resveratrol every second day on a normal diet lived dramatically longer than any other group. So people out there, you know, my, my critics say, oh, resveratrol didn't extend the lifespan of mice on a normal diet, therefore it's not aging, it's just protecting against a high fat diet. Well, look at the supplemental data, please. If you give it to, to the mice every other day, we had mice living over three years. Wow, and that's a very long life for a mouse. It was, by far. And so it was a long lifespan extension. And what that told me is that probably you don't want to be taking a supplement every day. You can take it either every other day or give your body a rest. And I do the same with my meals. I rest during the day and then I give a nutritious dinner to my body and then give it a rest. Same with exercise. And then I try to time it because there are times when I'm taking the drug metformin, which mimics low energy. For those of you who don't know, metformin is a drug given to type 2 diabetics to bring down their blood sugar levels. But it's been found that looking at tens of thousands of veterans and others, that those two type 2 diabetics live longer than people that don't even get type 2 diabetes. So it's a longevity drug. Right now you have to get it from your doctor in the US. In most other countries, you can just get it over the counter. And you protect it, uh, cancer, heart disease, frailty, dementia. So I take metformin. In addition, you take metformin and you're fasting each day. So when do you take it relative to the fast? Yeah, I, I always take um, metformin in the morning, uh, along with the resveratrol, uh, because for a number of reasons, but mainly because uh, my body responds better. And I've been measuring my body for 12, 13 years. But here's the thing, if I'm going to exercise uh, that day, I will skip the metformin. And a lot of people who are, who do pay attention to this, this kind of thing think that they should stop taking metformin because they're never going to get muscle or it's going to affect their ability to build up muscle. But that's not true. What metformin does to you, it actually just reduces the, your ability to have stamina because it's inhibiting your body's ability to make energy. And so what happens is when you're on metformin, you do fewer reps. But guess what? Those muscles that you do build up on metformin have the same strength and have much lower inflammation and other markers of aging. You just won't have that extra 5% size of muscles. So if you want large muscles, don't take metformin and you'll be fine during your exercise. Uh, but for me, I, I'm not trying to get giant. I want strong muscles and I want to li live longer and healthier. So I'm, I just try to time it so that I get most reps out of my exercise regime. Do you regularly do the cold shower thing, ice baths, cold water swims? Are you into that whole biz? Well, you, you do know that I've done it at least once. I don't do them regularly. Um, I, I do try to sleep cool. Mm -hmm. um, I sleep better anyway. Mm -hmm. uh, I try to dress without a lot of warm clothes. I'm here in a t-shirt. It's middle of summer, but in winter, I'll try to wear a t-shirt too. So you're challenging your system to thermoregulate. Right, right. We published what's called the metabolic winter hypothesis, which is a few tens of thousands of years ago, we were either hungry or cold or both. And we rarely experience that now. And so we try to give ourselves the, the metabolic winter. And part of the problem, I think, with the obesity epidemic is that we're never cold. And cold, when you're cold, you have to burn energy. It may be only slightly. Mm -hmm. But over the whole night, if you're a little bit cool, you'll actually expend more energy. So I try to do that. I'm not a big fan of cold showers. Um, the sauna, I don't have access to my gym as much as I did. So, I, But I do want to get back into it. I used to do it regularly with my son. Long story short, um, I, I try to compensate with changes in my diet and exercise until I get back into it.